Hi, I'm Dr. Peters with Peters Wellness Chiropractic and Massage. This week's quick video is entitled Spine 101. It goes along with this week's handout, which you begin in email or on social media so you can read more detail. But real quickly, just talking about the spine. What is it? What's its job? What does it do? Well, and looking at the spinal column, okay? So here I have a little sample, a little model of it. And these are a couple of lumbar spinal segments. So when we talk about the spinal column, we're talking about those bones that protect our spinal cord. And we're talking about from the cervical spine into the thoracic spine, lumbar spine, which all of that sits on top of the sacrum and the pelvis. And then all of those nerve roots are distributed through the body to control every single organ, tissue, and cell in your body. So just real quick on the anatomy. Um, here we have a vertebral segment and we have a second vertebral segment if you can see that there okay in between these two vertebra I have an intervertebral disc or IVD an intervertebral disc and we can look at that from a top-down version we have the annulus fibrosis which is the outer um, well would you call it outer more dense section to keep the nucleus pulposus in the center you know, some of these names are crazy, but just to give you an outlining of the annular area, think of it like a jelly donut, okay? Here's the outer side of it, and here's the delicious center that some of us like and some of us don't. But with that analogy, what we don't want to see is this disc getting any thinner. We don't want it expanding. We want it to stay strong and firm and keep this nice spacing between the vertebra. So, and the reason why it's important is right on the side where you see this little yellow nerve coming out, there's a hole there. So that hole in between the vertebra is called the intervertebral foramina, or IVF. But it's just the hole between the vertebra. And I'm going to show you a second model. And I'm going to come to what's one with phase two degeneration. And I'm just going to hold these up. So you can see, you see how the disc space here is much thinner than it is here? So this is phase two. I just wanted you to be able to see that difference. We have the disc here much thicker. Here we have the disc being much, much thinner. And you can see these little osteophytes here on the edge of the bone on the vertebra. And when we show people their x-rays, you can see those osteophytes, those small bone growths, okay? And the other big thing is you see this, the intervertebral foramina, that hole there, how large it is and how small it is over here. So now we've got possible bony pressure on a nerve. Okay, it's like someone stepping on the garden hose and you're trying to wash your car. This is not a good situation to be in. Now, a couple other things. Remember we talked about the nucleus pulposus and the annular fibrosis? Well, here we have degeneration of the outer ring or that annulus. And now we have a disc, the nucleus pulposus, pushing out. Remember that jelly donut analogy? We even got it red here, so it looks like something delicious. But that pushing back. Now this is going back straight posterior into the spinal cord itself, where here on the side you can see here is a lateral protrusion into the one side of the spine. So now you could have someone with... Um, sciatica on one side only or radiculopathy from the neck down into the shoulder or from the low back into the leg possibly all the way down to the foot so and again now when we take x-rays we can kind of see that or we can see what phase of degeneration a person is in we can see if they're having any uh, transitional movement that they shouldn't be having um, but also, we can get a better idea of where these disc bulges or disc herniations could be. And then from there, if a person isn't responding like they should be, we can order an MRI and do a referral out if needed. But in a lot of cases, when you get these segments moving, if we look here, so here's these two vertebra. On the back, if you can see right here and right here, those are called zygapophyseal joints or facet joints. So these are where the two vertebras rub together. And those are supposed to move. If they don't move and they lock up and don't allow proper movement or flexion or rotation, like, Doc, I can't turn my head to the right or I can't turn it to the left. Well, those facet joints get locked up. And they then 
inflammation happens around there and that starts to irritate the nerves so the signals are being messed with and you got numbness and we got tingling we got sharp shooting pain burning pain loss of sensation increase of sensation whatever that symptom can be and by getting those joints moving we take that pressure off and allow the body to start the healing process so i just wanted to touch base on that this week's handout will go into more detail but I think it's important for people to understand the structures in their body that control the information going from your brain to everything in your body. And that's why I love what I do. I absolutely love it. And I hope you enjoy the video and we will see you next week.